So when you're done with your quiz, um, you're going to start on this activity using special right triangles to find exact values, and this is located in your notes packet. Um, the first thing you're going to do before you start anything else is scribble out these numbers because I decided I want to be a little more general here. So I'm going to change what is written here. Okay, so what you're looking at here are the special right triangles, and you may remember those from last year, the 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90. Um, you don't have to know those triangles, but we're going to use those triangles for our activity. So just to remind you, in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, this is x, x, and then this side is x square root of 2. Hopefully that looks at least a little bit familiar, but again, you're not responsible for knowing that. Okay, um, This is just how we're going to fill in our table down below. And then on the 30, 60, 90, the short leg is x, the hypotenuse is 2x, and the longer leg is x square root of 3. And it's going to be kind of hard to see, but make sure you know that, like, for example, this is a 45 degree angle. Okay, again, I don't know if you can see that. Eh, a little bit. Um, that this is a, this would also be 45, by the way. That this is 30 degrees and this is 60 degrees. So the whole goal for today is to find exact values for sine, cosine, and tangent of these three angles, 45, 30, and 60. And that's going to lead right into what we're doing with the unit circle next, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to set these up using SOHCAHTOA, and we're going to simplify them as much as we can. That might involve some rationalizing, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then we're going to put the exact value down here. And you may remember from back in Chapter 8 or a couple times this year, we've talked about exact values are not decimals. So that's why we're not just typing sine of 45 into our calculator. Okay, so the exact values are like the things that are found on the unit circle. Okay, so for example, sine of 45. Here's my 45 degree angle, and I'm really smart, so I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I guess I'll just write this maybe up at the top. That's sine 45 would be opposite over hypotenuse, so that's x over x square root of 2. Okay. Now what's going to happen there is your x's are going to cancel, okay? and that leaves you with, so if there's nothing left on the top, as a space holder I'm going to put a 1 over the square root of 2. And I'd love for that to be my answer, um, but remember there's a rule in math that you can't let, leave a square root on the bottom. And I'm not sure if you remember that, from. I'm not sure if we talked about that this year or if you've seen it in previous years. I know you saw it last year in geometry. But I can't have a square root on the bottom, so I'm going to do a process called rationalizing. That's what this rationalizing thing is all about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by another square root of 2, because square root of 2 times square root of 2 is really going to make, um, it's going to make the square root cancel out, because you're squaring a square root. So multiplying by a square root of 2 is going to leave me with just a regular old 2, and that's perfectly fine to have on the bottom of a fraction. But if I multiply by this on the bottom, I have to multiply by that same thing up on the top, okay? Because now I'm really just multiplying by a 1. This whole thing is equal to 1, and multiplying by 1 doesn't change my answer at all. It's just going to change the way it's written. So then the top here, 1 times square root of 2, would just be square root of 2. The bottom, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is going to give me just a 2, okay? And if you're not sure about that, two ways you can think about it that multiplying these two together is really like doing square root of 2 squared, okay? And squaring a square root makes them cancel out, and so you would just have a 2 left. Or you could think of it as square root of 2 times square root of 2 would give you the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is also 2. So either way, this is what we come out with, and that's what I want you to put in your table, okay? So in your table for sine of 45, it's going to be square root of 2 over 2. So now your job is to go through and, and calculate the rest of these. Some of them are going to involve this rationalizing. Okay, and remember that rationalizing comes in anytime you have a square root on the bottom. Some of them won't. But they are all going to have two x's in them, one on top and one on bottom. And so you can always cancel out your x's. Okay? So that is your task for now is to get these nine values filled in. Once we all have the nine values filled in, we'll kind of talk about them, make sure we all have the right answers, and then proceed to homework for the night. Thanks for your time.